What's up, guys? Pittsburgh Weisschwartz back again with another set review. Uh, today we're doing Sal, Alicization 2. Uh, just got announced for English. Uh, so we're going to do the whole thing. We're going to run through the whole set. There's no trial deck this time, so there's the set. I'm joined by Andy, Brian, and Tyler, all of you who you've met before. Yes, sir. Hey, guys. And then our special guest, two-time world champion, Riaz, is here. What's up, everyone? So you're uh, you're known for being the Sal Alice guy now, right? AOT and Sal Alice. Those are your yeah. claims to fame. Yeah, WSI. Uh, I got the show Sal uh, Sal Alice. Deck sick. Was a big fan of that list. You've been testing a lot with like the new stuff, right, Riaz? Yeah. Well, have. What have you like kind of tested so far? Like I've I've never really seen any of the cards in the set yet going into it. I've heard that they're pretty good. What's like the What's the good stuff people are like gravitating towards to just like right out of the gate? Uh, well, I don't know what people are gravitating towards, but I'm gravitating towards like yeah, level one Kirito, level three Asuna, especially level three Asuna. Potential to just delete people out of existence. A uh, really good closed game finisher. Um, been so I've mainly been testing in blue and yellow. Uh, recently, I've started testing green. Uh, I do like it, but. I haven't really tested enough to say that it's better or worse than the uh, blue-yellow deck I've been testing. All right. Okay. Well, without further ado, we'll get right into it. Uh, Andy, you want to start us off with this first card? Yes. Is it a brainstorm? It's not. Thank nope. you. Nope. <laughs> God, when this card attacks, choose one of your other characters. They get 1,000 power times the soul of that character. Turn. Is there like a term for that? Like a soul pumper? Mm -hmm. or like... Nope. I don't know. I feel like I've been seeing this effect more and more lately. Anyway, uh, also has one that gets reversed in battle. You can uh, put the top card of your stock to clock and send this to memory if you do choose a Flecklight character in your waiting room, add it to hand. So it's near Ricky, right? Yeah, Not on reverse. Waiting, but on yeah, reverse. And, and on reverse. But this goes to memory and can take anything, not level locked. And has like a really good second effect too. Second effect helps you win lanes at level zero and even later into the game. So pretty cool. Ricky that's not dead later. Yeah, even later in the game you can start taking your higher level cards back off this too. Yep. I like it a lot. Yeah, seems super solid. I mean it goes to memory. It's a uh I mean it compresses you, gets you whatever you want, buffs your lanes. And I guess it acts as a memory condition for that level one Tiza if you're playing that in the uh, the green list too. It uh it turns on a lot of cards, as we'll see. A lot of cards require either this card or uh, some cards in memory. This is your main memory generator. Okay. Cool. Yep. I like it a lot. Sure. I just love that it goes to memory. The Ricky with a uh, upside. So. I can dig it. How many cards uh, in this set need? Memory condition? A uh, couple. A couple of the important ones. Yeah, Do you need sounds... two? or? It, it sounds like there are some cards that require this card specifically in memory. Riaz, yeah, what yeah. do you think? Uh, well, so this card, like, I mean, if you're just looking at set two, I, I think that I would not play this card out, all over the other Rikis. I'd only play it if I was using the Asana level three. Uh, I, I just feel like the set one Alice Ricky is a far better Ricky than this is, uh, due to the condition of. I I don't like how this card needs to be reversed to activate it. it means you can't self proc it. It means that you may be delayed um, a lot more, or like uh, not really delayed, but you're like forced into a decision really quick whether to use it or not. But I mean, it's it's still pretty cool, but. Um, I do think uh, out of the set two, I guess, Ricky choices, it is uh, probably the better one uh, for, well, for Flucklight specifically. Yeah, I think um, the green one's for Avatar Net. Oh, well, the green one's for anything, but it is, it is Avatar Net traits, so you're going to be hard to get it to your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, I, would, I think the Alice Ricky from set one is just far better than this one in terms of, like, the Ricky effect. Uh, I guess this one has a second effect that could become useful, but uh, I personally uh, think that it's an okay card, but um, 
Uh, is that one Ricky is the um, what? Look at top three. Put one of them into your clock, and then yeah, and then or, salvage or any any character. So yeah, like, any it, light, I think. Uh, yeah, any fluck light. So like, uh, it it digs deeper, right? It digs three more cards deeper. It also controls what you can clock, so you can fix for certain colors. Uh it also like I mean it is a little bit bigger, but I don't think it really matters that much. Uh, and it's also sent on waiting room, so you can self proc it too if your level stocky. You can do a little bit more than this card can. I think this card's main purpose is like you're playing Austin, you you just forced to use this while you have more options when you're playing the other finishers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess we'll get to level three Austin later. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, that's what I that's what I say. It has it has some downsides, but it's it's passable enough to play in other decks. But it's also you know not something I think like unless the power pump's that necessary. I think uh, the other Ricky wins it over uh, the Alice Ricky uh, for generic users. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Alice. Ricky so are you uh, are you familiar with our grading scale? The uh... Uh, I mean, I, I think, I mean, is there like, is it just A, B, C, D, and then minuses or pluses? Yep. Pretty much. S yeah. is like the cream of the crop. S is like super broken, meta-defining, like really, really broken card. Not many things get an S. A is like really good. Uh, you're probably playing it in most lists. B uh. is like above average. C is just like average or niche. He's below average. F is Barbo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think I'd give this like an A minus uh, personally. Uh, I think that's fair. It, but um, I mean, yeah, you made a good point. Definitely. Yeah, like having to get reversed means like, especially with all these like minus five hundred cards, like on play, give minus five hundred stuff being more uh, prevalent lately. Like Overlord has their brainstorm. Uh, there was another card in this set that has like on play give minus five hundred. Yeah, the leaf card. Huh? So I mean, I mean, they're starting to print that effect more mm-hmm. to deal yeah. with these overloaded five hundred. So just some. There's a know, strong consideration to run the other one. Watch out for, yeah. Yeah, just you know, some consideration when choosing your rookies since this set actually has a selection of them. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Must we can nice. move on. <laughs> All right, up next, we've got this Alice level one combo. Uh, for each of your other Fluck Light characters, gets 500 power, so it can get up to 5,500 power with a full field. When this attacks, if the wind memories are here, is in your climax zone, put the top card of your deck to stock and reveal the top card of your deck. If it has a soul trigger, you may put that card into your hand. So this is kind of like a uh, it's like Bunny Girl, Bunny Girl Union. Union. Mm-hmm. On attack. Except- it's on attack and hits on soul triggers, including so climaxes. Climax, including climaxes, like wind has a soul trigger, for example. Huh. Um, I I don't hate it. It's it's just kind of. Both of the Alice combos are really weak stat wise, but the the set one one at level one requires a reverse, I think, right? Or am I yeah. wrong? Yes, that's yeah. Cool. So this yeah, one might be better overall in the playing, in the current meta as of right now. Heavy on soul triggers, yeah. Yeah. I think like the Alice builds kind of push you to eight win though. Uh, they definitely Alice do. seems to be all about win triggers, at least from the first set. Which means you can hit your climaxes off this combo since they have soul triggers. If you're playing eight win. Yeah. I I, I don't know how I really feel about this. Um, I'm I like that it's on attack. And I like the fact that it has probably a better chance to hit. Mm-hmm. Maybe? I don't know. I haven't done the math. It's, it's like, a maybe a better chance yeah, to yeah. hit than Bunny Girl Union? Well, yeah, because it hits your climaxes as well. Your so climaxes. You, have a, you have at least seven more hits, assuming the other seven in your deck. What, this wasn't the combo you were talking about, was it, Riaz? Like, the really good one? No, no. It's just the Kirito, I think. Yeah, once we get to blue, that's where that one's at. Uh, yeah, this, this combo's cool, but I think as we, I guess, progress through the set, uh, you'll find that Alicization, both in set one and set two, does not have a good way to convert its stock into hand besides brainstorming or the first set's 
resonance, but it's tap two, so you're only going to get that resonance once. It's like an administrator, you check top five, add one risk, go to the waiting room. Uh, I think on that fact, you may have the stock, but your hand may end up suffering if you whiff this. Like, I feel like combos like this, like the reason why combos like this are really good in like Konosuba is because like Bunny Union can convert, uh, like the back row can convert that stock into hand. Right. Uh, I don't think Alicization has a reliable way of doing that. And if you're just converting one stock per turn to hand, it may not be uh, worth it to make the argument that the resonance in the resonance engine in this set is uh, worth it. But I mean, it's a uh, you, you don't really have much choice because, like you guys said, the Alice the Alice really pushes eight win. There's like a lot of support around uh, the. Uh, the win combo, so you may just have to hope for brainstorms and stuff. Uh, th- there's other ways of, like, I guess saving your cards, but uh, it's uh, as an overall generic scheme, I I think the combo does lack a lot of uh, consistency. You can just equate this as a stock charge that may sometimes get you an extra card. Like, maybe if you play three, maybe only one, maybe if you're lucky, two of them will get you an extra card. That's how I look at it. Yeah. That's kind of how I think about Bunny Girl Union, too. Yeah, it's like, you can't really, there's no way to really set up, like, the plus. You can't, like, dig that deep to really set it up easily. Right. I mean, um, but I do like the fact that the stock charge is on attack. So, like, if you try field this, you're guaranteed to, like, be getting six stock this turn, which is a lot. Mm-hmm. And I guess as far as, like, adding other climaxes to your hand, too, right? It doesn't have to just be eight wind. I mean, this works with pants. This works with uh, standby. Standby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stock soul. Stock soul. Yeah. Two soul. Uh, <laughs> oh, two soul. That's uh, a I don't know how I feel about this. Like, a... what did y'all give the uh, leaf a level one combo? Uh, a right. Uh, I gave it like an A plus. I think. Uh... I think the consensus yeah, was we, we gave it like always. the uh, Leafa combo. I just needed a base so I know what's what. Yeah. yeah I think that's about accurate. Mm-hmm. It is on attack. I think that's the, the biggest. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't need to reverse. Mm-hmm. Like and it says 55 one. cross turns. like not the worst. But yeah, I think there are better options for on attack mm-hmm. combos in the set. Just combos in general than this. But whatever, we can move on. You need to build stock. It seems fine. Yeah. 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 Free stock building is pretty good. Stock. I'm sure there's some strategy where this is worth it. May not be the main strategy, but I'm sure you could like make use of it somehow. You can do something with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a place. All right. So we got this Asana and Alice. Uh, two or fewer climaxes in your waiting room gets minus one level. Uh, so your standard two or fewer early play. You have two or more other fluck like characters. It gets 1500 power in hand on core, so it's a 10 5 hand on core. And then on play, uh, top check X, where X is the number of your fluck like characters at any card. So it's a can tripping uh, 10 5 hand on core early play. I like it. Pretty yeah, solid. Like solid. Yeah, I, I like cards of this. An early play that, that not only replaces itself, but can also save itself on the backswing in case it gets overpowered. I think these are. Really strong in, like, uh, I guess, up to date wise, I should say. Mm. Like, forces your opponent to actually use a, a some kind of field removal type card rather than just running it over. And also can help set up your next turn with the climax or other cards you need. I, uh, or even the same turn as played, right? You can even play, really yeah. play your current combos. So I think it's a really good card. These it's cards nice, uh... just uh, turn the junk in your hand into two soul beaters. I think it's just like really valuable. Yeah, the fact that it's so resilient just means you get to swing with two souls in, in this card's lane every single turn. Unless it is uh removed to a to another zone that you can't save it. hmm I was gonna say I, I, I like the it's a nice breath of fresh air. Um to see aggressively slanted early plays get printed. You know. Because it seems like it's always just early play healer, early play healer. But this is like nice and aggressively slanted. You get to dig into whatever you need to dig into. Maybe another early play, maybe a climax, uh, whatever you want, and you can just keep recurring it with a hand on core to keep getting two soul every turn. Push tempo. 
Uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's just like an easy A card. Mm -hmm. These uh, these sort of um, what is it? It's like the the one stock early play heal and like the the hand on core early play are like the new standards for what you expect out of an early play. I think these days, regardless but of what its effect is, is this better than the UGO from set one, the healer? Uh, I mean, I also think it's it's hard to compare cards that have two different types of usages. So like. As a healer, yeah, I mean, this one doesn't heal, so yeah, but as, like, as an early play, I think this one, uh, because they both require the same condition, I think this one is just better because it has more uses than just healing. Well, the Yuja would, the only time you can say it's better is if you're actually playing the Kirito top end because it goes together. That's what I feel like. How many times have we seen sets where it's like, oh, damn, I wish I had a top check X. Like, I wish I had a good top check X, right? Well, oh, it's more so like the top check X this early in, right? Because a lot of sets do yeah. have it, but it's like quite at level three. Mm -hmm. So I think the fact that he can come on it too is what's really valuable. Like, this is how I end up getting my combo a lot of times with my Asuna finisher. Yeah. Usually you don't see the hand on core along with the top check X, at least in my experience. Um, I at least, at least killers. as English goes, I, I don't think I think this is the first of its kind that will show up. I believe, right? I, yeah. I don't I don't think English has a certain hand on core with the grabs cards as well. I don't I think so. The only two I can think yeah. of: Revy Starlight has one and it's garbage, and Overlord has one, but I think she just gets power with experience. The uh, Nabe. Yeah, this is um. The the other hand on Corelli plays are like Union and Shizu, and they're both healers. So mm -hmm. This is uh, a lot better because it, well, for this kind of deck, I think, for the deck it's in, uh, it's a lot more valuable. And speaking of the deck it's in, uh, Riaz, you want to tell us about one of your favorite cards, I'm assuming? Uh, <laughs> yes, this, 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 this Asana, like, I've been testing, it could just be like, you know, Bias to the fact that I've only played around 30, 40 games with the deck. But if your opponent is at 3 0, like, well, first of all, like, it's a healer on play. And then, you know, the cost seems pretty heavy, right? It's on attack, pay two, ditch two, you mill 11. But I think, like, it, the opponent's at 3 0, there is a really high possibility that if you can play two of these, they're going to be deleted out of existence. Uh, because. T 22 cards is generally less than the cards you have in your deck when you hit, like when you're at level three, a lot of times. Uh, I think that on average, you expect like four burn ones, like at worst, a lot of times. But, you know, and I do think timing is a thing, but um, we'll see later there's a way to like alleviate that. But, I think uh, I think this is probably not taking into account that you know uh, I guess reactions with the opponent. Like this is probably I think Alicization's strongest finisher uh, for set two specifically. Um, I don't know. I, I I like this card a lot. I I, I think it's. Um, I think it's what it needed. It needed a non on reverse finisher that's like really good. But I think a lot of sets these days, you know, like a lot of them have moved away from on reverse finishing and they either just sit there and heal or they have a non reverse finisher. And I feel like that's what the first set kind of lacked. Like a lot of people ended up countering your Kirito because there were like a lot of things. I mean, sure, AOT had probably something to do with it in the English meta, but there are a lot of things that. That hurts you, like yeah, oh, you gotta have cards in your opponent's field for you to actually kill them. Well, this one, it's gonna be hard for your opponent to play the long game because uh, if they're at three zero, there's a good possibility that they're taking you know three to seven, like even up to seven, because like you, you can have a low amount of cards in deck and you just mill through that, and then you just the next one mills through like almost the next set of like almost half the next deck. So it's it's pretty cool. I guess I would note that. Uh, if you don't mill any climaxes, you're probably triple canceling next turn because you know, eleven to twenty-two cards is a lot of cards to mill through. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I, I think its downsides, though, is that one, it heals, right? It doesn't check top X, so it is, in reality, a two-turn finisher. Uh, the way it's like kind of like structured, because generally when a card heals, it, it, it means it's saying that it wants you to have another turn. Uh, the only problem is, is that the, because it mills so much, when you heal, you're going to heal, you're going to go down the 3-0, you're going to put the extra cards back into your waiting room, and then when you refresh, you end up right back at 3-1. Uh, so I guess no matter how much you heal, you'll probably end up at 3-1 at the end of your double loss in the turn. Uh, versus, you know, stuff like Mikasa or uh, other cards, you see them like check top X or draw 2, drop 1. And they're probably, like, if you notice, their text is mainly saying, I'm, I'm basically trying to kill you now. While this one has, like, a variable finish. It's not guaranteed to burn 1 or burn 2. It's, like, burn X for X's number of... Well, burn 1 X times or X's number of uh, climaxes. And that's another thing. It doesn't burn X. It burns 1 X times. So that, that's really big. It's a lot of pangs. Uh, yeah, it is. Versus, I guess you guys can compare it to the original Mother's Rosario combo, where it was burn X... Where X was the number of climaxes. This is just like the improved version. I will say its downsides is that it requires a ditch two. Not really the pay two. That's like not really that much, but the ditch two. And I think this is where having a strong and consistent early game comes from. So, or like even so, we just mentioned that early play, right? Earlier. It gets your card back, right? So, like th that little like card you got back can matter so much to getting single to double of these. It feeds huh? into it, yeah. Mm -hmm, definitely. But, the healing, uh, I guess, is nice with the fact that you probably want to clock and draw two cards also, right? So you yeah. Can clock on your point. final turn going into this. You can also heal. tank a turn, right? Like, you can, like, play these in the back row and swing up your front row, and if you think you're compression enough to survive a turn, it's not time yet to finish your opponent. So th that's where the healing comes in handy. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of like... So, so I, I think of healing on a finisher kind of as, like... Kind of like insurance, I guess. Like, yeah, you, you can still have a healer on like a really powerful, aggressive finisher, right? Like, card like this, or maybe look at like Finn and Jake in um, uh, Adventure Time, or like Birdcage Yukina in uh, Bang Dream, yeah. right? All like really big damage pushy finishers, but they all heal on fly. So like, even if like. Despite the overwhelming amount of damage you're pushing, your opponent's able to live. You at least have a chance to like sack them back with the heal. Yeah, it, yeah. It does give you some versatility as well, being able to like, like the play you said, like play these to the back row heal. Yeah, and it then lets try you to get wait. Next turn. It lets you wait. Like uh, finishers like this, where like they're obviously very strong finishing effects, but they're also stable to a heal, means that you're not committed to immediately going for like your finisher when you hit level three. You can go for the play where you wait if your compression's good enough where you think you can live uh, and your opponent's not ready to die. Like, say they're like mid level two or something like that. You really want them to be at 3 0. Uh, you can wait it out, play down your heels, uh, shove up your back row or something like that, put these in the back row. You've played your healers. Your cards are already down. You have your hand conserved. You swing out, hopefully get them to level three or whatever. They play out their turn, you live, and then you crack back with this, and they're just completely deleted from the game. Yeah. I mean, that has its own issues, though, too. Like, I always hate doing that, though. Like, it's a play you can make. Like, yeah, I'll play these to the back or I'll save them for next turn, and I'll just heal down this turn. But then you're just opening yourself up to getting sacked. Like, okay, well... Because then your opponent's like, okay, well, I'm totally fucked next turn. I'm dead. Well, so I mean, these are still level threes. If you have a way to defend these in some way, you know... And hold on to them. Don't mm -hmm. play them to the front row. It gives you the option. Well, more so, it's like the option there versus a a draw type finisher it doesn't heal. So I mean that when you're playing them, you if you're just waiting another turn, you're not getting any extra insurance. You're you're stuck at three two three three whatever damage you're at. So you either have to go for it, go big, or just pray that you just like live somehow. So I think I think it's not so much like you know like going for that strategy, it's just like the option of that strategy exists. I also note that it's on a choice. Uh, not on a wind or, I guess, a double soul. It, it is. I think choice is becoming like one of the. I think choice, like the, as a trigger, uh, this might be what this is the second choice we're getting into uh, English, right? The first one's Adventure Time, I think. For like a finisher, I think 
like the yeah the third or second or third. So, I think choice is a really good uh for this combo. Choice is a really good um trigger because it means if you have extra stock, you can sack it. Like not even sack. Like throughout the game, that extra card or that extra stock it gives you could help you versus like if it was a wind or something. I guess it's the same argument for like door or comeback, however you want to describe it, or in pants or gate. Like they. They give you extra cards, so I think uh, I think I think choice is pretty cool with this finisher. Choice is yeah, a really definitely. good trigger, I think in general. Yeah, it's super good. It's it's pretty expensive on both ends though, like pay two and discard two. So like you can use the choice to build up either one of those resources, hand or stock, whichever you need. Yeah, yeah, it's a. I mean, like the the type of when you see ditch two, it may end up being like this is like you're calling final turn, but then it also heals, so it's like. You, you're calling final turn, but with like a little bit of uh, resistance there. So like, I think it's uh, it's it's funny, but yeah, yeah. I, a lot of times, I either kill my opponent or I just have one card in my hand. So if I survive, I have to move up the back row. That's generally what it is. I mean, most times my opponent doesn't survive, but you know, Carmen saw first hand. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes sometimes your opponent has a one card hand, you get another turn. Sometimes they yeah. they mill eleven clean. <laughs> Oh yeah, dude. Sometimes that actually happens, or like just all on the bottom. But you know, then you that, cancel. So you whatever. Bunch, yeah. Then you cancel. So it's 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 fine. Uh, it, it's fine. It's like I think some people argue that it's a very risky finisher. When you see the people are very wary of these like variable type finishers. And I think you just have to set your uh, set your. If you're like a very pessimistic person, you can just say double these will only get you burn two. So sculpt your sculpt your game like sculpt your game plan around that. I guess, but. I think uh, nowadays, especially Alice's edition two, you have enough deck control to uh, to allow like uh, a finisher like this a, a shot. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not the type of finisher where you just like slam it with no thought behind it. Like you have to be playing your whole game up to this point, like making sure your you know final deck. And graveyard that you're going to be shuffling back is like has a lot of climaxes in it, mm-hmm. so that you can get the burn effect. You can't just like pay no mind to that and then just expect to do well. You have to like build up for it the whole game. You have to like play with your combo in mind. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan. And this is off of. Yeah, it's really good. This is off of Mother's Rosario, also. It is. Yeah, I would note that this also combos from Sao. The original Sao, uh, there's a gold bar in the extra booster that comboed with level one Yuki combo that also works here. And then there is a stock soul from, I believe it was re edit or it might have been another. Yeah, it's hella old. I think it's on the scale, maybe. But yeah. Yeah, there was a stock soul, which uh, I guess so. But I do think the bar is also a viable option. if you're running green or some way, some somehow you're running green, because unfortunately she, you could she's... run, you could run that... Leafa combo, Leafa bar combo into this with the bar finisher, bar. eight bar. Yeah, that's a possibility. It does have enough ways of, I think it has an okay number of ways of ditching in the series, so you wouldn't be as flooded. But what's um, so so is this awesome? Is this Avatar Net or is this Flocklight? No, it's Flocklight. Flocklight, and I think the other one might be Goddess. Yeah, Goddess, Goddess, yeah. So, I mean, hooray for standard Konosuba. (laughs) Something like that. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Could could you even, like, splash this into, like, a Garasau or something? Like, Avatar Net Sau? So, you can, but there are ways, like, what really sucks is that English did not get 10th anniversary, which 10th anniversary of the brainstorm that salvages any character. That that brainstorm would have been the bridge between the two sets. Mm-hmm. That bridge is, is no longer there, so you have to use other means of grabbing it, like drop searchers or not even drop searchers. There's like a Xenon that's an avatar net. The, the it, Silica it, it, salvages anything, so you could play the Oh, that's it? Oh, I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. you could play the it, tap two brainstormer just for it. It, uh, the the silica that you tap down to give honor or salvage, it only gives oh. that effect to Avanet, but it salvages anything. So you yeah, could yeah, you could effectively like play this in Gara if you wanted to. And I think yeah, this yeah, is yeah. straight okay, up okay. this 
This is just straight up better than the other Asuna that people play as like a one or two of. So, yeah, then, def definitely. Then, then you have to play the Ricky that only grabs Flocked Lights. I mean, sure. Oh, wait, yeah, because you have to have the Asuna. And you, oh, you know, right? yeah, see, I think that's where the confliction, maybe not the level three, but the zero, zero. Uh -huh. Yeah, because you have to have that card in to play this card. Even then, I I, I really fucking like this finisher. I, I'm a big fan of these... Um, when I see this card, I think a lot of the Kirisuna from Sal 10th, where it opens up these options where you can just slam these cards as healers. <laughs> Obviously, it's not as slammable as the Kirisuna, because that was an 11k. But still, like it opens up these options that you otherwise wouldn't have, uh, where it gives you a lot more lines to go for at endgame, and that's always a good thing. I'm I'm with Riaz. I think it's like an A plus card. You know, I got, I got really pumped for a second. I had to like go back and double check, but like, just like you could maybe think of splashing this Asuna finisher into like OG Sal. Maybe you could bring Zek and Yuki into Alicization, but Zek and no. Yuki only searches for Avatar Net. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh I don't know, maybe there's a way to make it work still. Even there. the Ricky is fluffed like goddess, I believe. There might be so. something, but uh Yeah, the trace. Let me double check. Back. I believe it's yeah, it's fluffed like goddess as well. So might be rough, but still I, I think the finisher as it stands th this would be what I would build for, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. And the fluff like build this seems super, super good. Yeah, I think the the mill thing is like even if you're super pessimistic, the card's still good. Yeah, and and maybe you could maybe I, I don't know. Could you run a one of Zach and Yuki? No. Just to use with the uh, Mother's Rosario. Is there enough Avatar Net in Flocklight? No. no, most of the Flocklight are Flocklight in some other trade due to the anime. Like it. Yeah, it'd be rough. It's rough. I think. I think. I think Carmen's right. The only time you can use his avatar net is playing Garasa with the back row, because I've seen builds like that like pop up on like encore decks and stuff. Uh, and you still have to run the fucking the the Ricky somehow. You got to get that card into memory somehow. So yeah. So like it 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 really hurts. Like it's more so the Ricky hurts your avatar net deck because you would have to find the. Oh yeah, because the, the Ricky's flocklight. Yep. Yeah, Ricky is Flucklight, but not so much it being Flucklight as the fact that it's salvaged Flucklight. I mean, that it'll probably won't plus you in the Gara Sal. Yeah, I mean, unless you're grabbing the finisher off it. So you... that that would be the only hope, right? You play four finishers and you grab the finisher off of this, and that way you, Yuki could search something else. Uh, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes against the toolbox idea. Rickies are great because they can grab your level one combos and stuff. Right. Right, yeah. Card's still really fucking good. This is uh -huh. this is definitely where I would start. Uh, card seems really awesome, but we can move on. Tyler. All right, we got Alice. Last attacks. If New World is in your climax zone, you may burn one on attack. And uh, this ability activates up to once per turn. During the turn, this is played on stage. One damage is canceled. Musashi. I like this card. This is Trouble Girl and Musashi all on one card. This is dope. It's worse than Trouble Girl because it doesn't have heal on play. Yeah, it does. Yeah, but also, you get to kill your opponent. Why do I want to heal anything on except turn? burn? So it's this is a very aggressively slanted finisher. I like this. I feel like ooh, I could I could see myself like play this over the last card. I, I actually really like this. You love Musashi. Yeah, uh, this, this is the this is the other option that I think. Like people should look towards it if they don't want to play the Asuna. Um uh, it it this is like a I guess a unique like I guess we rarely see cards like this, but it's a non climax combo finisher with a climax combo finishing ability. Mm -hmm. So I mean the only what the I think the most comparable thing this is to Mikasa, right? Because Mikasa also has a pay two burn one on reverse, but also on attack burn one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I like this card for deck building reasons. The, a, a card like this doesn't require a ditch out. Or, like it doesn't require a ditch or a stock, meaning that you can play the heal counters from the trial deck fuck light. You can play the anti-damage from uh from uh 
volley uh, re-edit or wherever the anti damage is from. But uh, yeah, re-edit. Uh, you can play the, uh, the uh, opposition by the opposition. Shield. Yeah. yeah, that's the name of it. Yeah, opposition by shield. It, it opens up a lot of bills, right? Like, I mean, it, it, I think that's like the power of this card. The flexibility it has over the Austin. Awesome. There's, there's not much flexibility when it comes to Austin, awesome, but this one, there's a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. The only, the only, the only downside, I guess, is if your opponent's at three zero, there is a world where they survive, and that's where they triple cancel and they end, and you only mill level zeros, and they end up at six damage. But hey, that's where the fact is. You, you have these other means of trying to stay alive too. I mean, I guess are they are they really um, or are they really actually living if you're tri fielding this? They always I mean, do. Two, they, two chances to proc the Musashi. Well, the the issue here is the Musashi is like you look at it from the floor side, which is burn one, burn one, burn one. So it's six burn ones if they triple cancel. Because like, it's not far fetched to say that people triple cancel at level three. Because if that was the case, a lot of finishers would see them a lot, a lot better. Hmm. I think. I think like the power of finishers come from like their second abilities. Now, like, I mean, this one, I mean, it's burn one, right? That's his finishing ability. And the Masashi is like off finish. It's a. Uh, you can argue that this is a better game closer than the Asuna, if they're like at three one, because this is guaranteed. You know what this is going to do. You know that this is. Oh, they're at three one. They're they're probably dead. Uh, versus the Austin, you you may there may be a world where you know you don't mill anything or you mill like two climaxes out of twenty two somehow, and, and you you don't kill them. So like, this is like a yeah more consistent, right? It's a more consistent finisher. Uh. What, what I like about it is something that you mentioned on the last card, Riaz, is that um on on the games where you want to be going like like how, how would I say it like the the Austin finisher makes you want to go all in and just win that turn. And mm -hmm. then you have this heal effect that kind of doesn't facilitate that game plan. I kind of yeah. like that this uh, this Alice is like all business. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm not healing. I'm just burning more. Mm -hmm. I'm killing you this turn. And I'm putting all my chips in on that. Yeah, much more aggressively slanted. And yep. I, I'm a big fan of aggressive finishers, so that's probably why I'm saying that. Yeah, I can definitely see this finisher being uh, being perfectly fine. Why is it off wind? Because it's an ally uh, card. I, I, I think that might be the only downside, I guess, that if people yeah. who actually care about their triggers on their climaxes, uh, they may not like wind, but I mean, I think maybe in our upcoming meta, the, the wind might actually play a huge role. Yeah, you just win. <laughs> yeah. The, the data live 2-2s. Two yeah. Wind is getting better positioned, yeah. So, I mean, same thing, right? Like, look at AOT. It's probably has, like, some of the worst trigger, like, trigger lineup, like, double soul and wind. Like, like there's a pretty depressing uh, trigger lineup there. Mm -hmm. But it showed that if the deck is good enough, it can still be competent enough to fight, uh, regardless of its trigger. So, you know, I think if you make a deck that's fit for this finisher, uh, you can... You can, uh... Do a lot of things. I mean, like, uh... Like you said, if they are three one or higher, this is a guaranteed yeah. death, right? Because the floor pretty, is pretty much one 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 one. You field three. No cantrip, yeah. no heal. So like you, you do, but you don't have to like pay anything to do it. So you just get in there and burn, 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 burn. Yeah, I think that A minus is right. I'm gonna throw it a little lower because I'm one of those people who does care about their trigger, but uh. Like like you guys said, wind is getting better. But I don't know. I see the choice on the other one, and I'm I'm much more attracted to the other Asuna. Oh yeah, choice. I mean, choice is a much better trigger by comparison. Yeah. Yeah, like I I think I would run this card instead. Personally, I think I would personally run this Alice finisher and like start there. But mm -hmm. I still got to give it the minus because it's like the the other card's a bit more versatile, being able to heal and. Potentially be a lot more. Yeah, I mean the, the ceiling, swingy, on, depending the ceiling how you hit with it. It's so high. Yeah, because cancel burns will never like will rarely catch up to actually burn like actual on attack burns. Uh, but I guess like if you don't find your uh, climax, you still can potentially ruin your opponent possibly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It does have that ability and can do damage even if you don't have Climax, which is cool. We were talking about this earlier with Bricoli. This set does have a Musashi. It does. I think Broccoli is guess... pretty good, isn't he? No. Um, <laughs> a little bit better. All right, we got uh, this level zero Alice. All your other Flucklights get 500 power. Uh, put a marker from under this into the waiting room. At the beginning of your climax step, if you have two or more other Flucklights, you can do that. Uh, and choose one of your opponent's characters and bounce it. Um, okay, and when your character reveals a climax with a wind trigger, this does not have a marker under it. You can look at the top card of your deck and put it face down under this as a marker. You get to double wind. These Alice cards are all about wind. I swear to God. Yeah. Is that one Alicization was like that too? Like, I don't know. Maybe that would be like a really that'd be pretty dope against uh, eight standby data live. Maybe. Yeah. Like this is getting true. really consistent wins. Like now you have even more chances to wind trigger them. Yeah, that was you want to consistently just bounce everything back. That's what I was thinking. This is your incentive for uh, for putting up with the eight wins in the Alice deck. I think that was maybe an issue with wind in general too. It's like, it's not like being able to go all in on like a bounce of your opponent's shit strategy could be really strong, but it's not consistent enough maybe on its own. This is adding like maybe enough consistency to it that maybe you could just go for like the tempo bounce everything back deck. Tempo in Weiss Schwartz. Well, yeah, I mean, in my game. Yeah, dude, it's tempo play. Vapor snag, dude. Tempo. It does. I mean, make yeah, that's like a every, lot of bounce. How's Data Live fighting through that? Every trigger you get is a delayed, additional wind trigger. Mm -hmm. Uh pretty cool. Only for eight wind, but it Definitely. does give you a reason to want to try eight wind. If you want to go all in on wind. This seems like the deck. Yeah, this is the, this you, is the you card for you. I wouldn't know that it looks like you could just stock triggers underneath this, or no? It only no, oh, you could only put one marker. No, no, no you could only. Uh, uh, never mind, never mind. You could only you could only did one. Yeah, you can only have one. one yeah. One at a time, yeah. Yeah, but I guess you can like leave it there and like in, if in the time of need you get double win. I guess I guess that's the strategy. I mean, it's supposed to alleviate like the the downside of playing like I guess eight wins or. Sometimes Whatever. the wind's not always good, so you can save it. And then, then when they like do something threatening and you trigger it, you're like, okay, well, I'll get rid of that and that. I mean, I think, I think, I think the, the point of this card and the point of like the way the Alice is like the Alice package is panning out to be is like it's it's like to counter like a specific meta basically, which is a meta of field based uh, decks. Yep. Uh, hmm. Seems like this would be really good if everyone's playing Data Live. I wonder if, if that... Uh, I, don't, I don't know if people do that. The Data Lives kind of sucks. Yeah, people hate it. Hey, maybe there's no reason to play this card. Data, data Lives bad, yeah. But yeah, mm. card seems... If you're playing 8-win, this card is... Uh, yeah, if you're, if you're playing uh, win, this seems bad. like the way to go, but only when you're playing 8-win. So yeah, plus. outside of that, it's, uh, it, it's worthless, basically, unless you're playing 8-win. I think even 4-wins is an argument that it's not really worth it at that point. No, for sure. You'd have to be all 8 Mm -hmm. All in. Yeah, this also does make the uh, the level one Alice combo we looked at a little bit earlier sit at six k across. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it puts it at that back up to eight k power threshold, uh, which is notable. Yeah, for the seventy five hundred threshold of standby targets, especially because it's on attack. So like, you know, you're you're not punished for winning board with the card, right. uh, which is always really important. I like that it's not on reverse. The first Alice combo in set one Alice. Yeah, it's on reverse. It's yeah. on reverse, which has negative synergy with. It's literally win. just a stall. It's counterintuitive. Yeah. So having an on attack combo is very nice. Mm -hmm. The Declaration of Independence. Yeah, fuck Nicholas Cage. He doesn't know what she doesn't know shit about White Schwartz. <laughs> Next card. All right, we have. Uh... We've got this Alice. Uh, if you have the Wind Alice that we just looked at, uh, all of your other Flock Light characters gain an additional 500 power in addition to the 500 power the other Alice is giving. And this is a pay one, rest two characters, five card brainstorm, 
for each win you reveal this way, choose a character in your waiting room, return it to hand. So it is a five card brainstorm that only hits on wins, and you can take multiple characters if you hit multiple climaxes. I do mm-hmm. like that uh, it, it's not like named climax. Like a lot of times it's like if you hit this name or this name climax, like that's how you get the extra cards in your brainstorm. But you could use this with even the set one win triggers if you want. Yeah, like I think that's also like the play they try, like Bush was trying to do here is that because it's now like a, a global 1K to all your Fluck Lights if the other Alice is on the field and the other one's a global five. So like in total, it's global 1K. That, that puts your Alice that was, I believe, 6k of a climax at 7k. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, she was 5k. Yeah, 1k, one soul is 6k, and this is 7k. So it, it makes it realistic that it could, like, maybe kill something, uh, this set one one. But, I mean, your set two, it means your set two one could just run over stuff. Mm-hmm. And if you can't run them over, just it's return into your opponent's hand. Is a five card brainstorm worth having to shoehorn yourself into playing this exact back row? Well, I think it's more so that I want to play eight wins so I get a good brainstorm. I think that's like the idea here. Yeah. Rather than I want to yeah. play this brainstorm only because the set revealed another. Yeah, you guys went over it in green. Another brainstorm that's more for generic uses. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you're keeping the uh, the wind Alice that we just looked at in your back row, you're only brainstorming once per turn anyway. So resting two for your brainstorm isn't that bad of a of a detriment. You get five card brainstorm for it. You get to go five. But- like the, the the five card tap twos are like, I think they really shine when you can do something like DMS, right, where you have cards that like go to stock or whatever. Uh, but that that's like a lot to ask. I think even with just this sort of bounce utility card in the back row. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, you don't have to rest for the marker thing. So you can brainstorm and pop the marker on the same turn. So there's no anti-synergy here. Uh, so if you're playing eight wins, you definitely just play this brainstorm and this back row. There's no contest here. Yep, goes in the eight win deck. I'm just gonna give it the same rating as the previous card, just because of uh. Yeah. You really they're like the, they're like peas of a pot of whatever yeah, like the saying goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just for eight wind, for sure. All right, we can move on. Uh, best art in the set. Uh, unfortunately, not an amazing card. We got this awesome analysis. Uh, two or fewer cards in stock. It's a three K. The start of your opponent's attack phase, you can choose one of your opponent's characters and move it to an empty slot in their front row. So it runs their character. Uh, yeah, uh, art wasted on this card. Yeah, if this was 35, you could make an argument. But being 3k, and then, like, I think, I don't know, like, what, I think the way, at least how regionals pan out and how people play the decks a lot of people are moving more towards like the aggression of triple lane mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. they go even if they go second and a card like this starts to lose its value when that's the case because you can't move it if there's like none and i think it's even it, it gets less value you know like the two even two you can argue that well it, you would only i guess save well i guess you'll be able to save one card um but yeah, no, I, 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 in in a game where a lot of people are tri fielding a lot, uh, more, uh, because busting is becoming a lot easier. I think uh, this loses a lot of value uh, because it only goes up to three k. Can't have to trade with vanillas. Loses hard to clean cut. Yeah, clean cut punishes is pretty bad. Yeah, I will I mean, say they're, obviously oh, yeah. they're tri fielding if they're clean cutting. Yeah, like, like yeah, that clean cut type thing is really, really bad. I, I will say though that I guess it gains a little bit more merit if you're playing the two mentioned back rows before, so you can bring it up to thirty five hundred. So there could be an argument to run it as like your early your early game thing, but I mean, I think when you need another card to make it acceptable, it, it loses even more value. Yeah, I yeah, guess if, I... You're, if you wanted to play the set one Alice though, right, and like have an on reverse combo. You sort of goad your opponent into a uh, tri field. You incentivize your opponent to tri field so they don't get negged by this card. They're swinging three times, which can knock you to level one, at which point you have three reverses for your combo. So if you have an on reverse combo at level one, I think that could work out. 
Yeah, which is why there's a good argument that the set one Alice might also be a, a certain play. Um, but yeah, if your opponent sees this, they have to weigh the pros and cons, whether it's worth giving you a combo that they could probably easily stop, easily stop or they just, I guess... But again, that play hard play. loses if they have a clean cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, And I feel like, what, we know that... Well, I guess Avatar Net has one. Data Live has one. ReZero. ReZero has versions. like multiple. Uh, like e one each now, one yeah. of the ReZeros has like one. I, I mean, I don't. I don't know about memory stuff. But I definitely know Frozen Bonds and the other one has one. The original. Yeah. Yeah. Memory Snow doesn't. I guess you could play the Rem one. I, I think she like falls into line of it. No, she doesn't. No, not really. No, that's what I do. I I, I play the uh, I play Rem Clean Cut in Memory Snow. Yeah. You Maybe can some do cards it. can grab her. You can do that. Yeah. It's um, Maybe there or whatever, right? Can grab her? No, nothing grabs her, but oh, the second trait that. she cuts magic characters and it's memory snow magic's the common trait. So you can't okay. grab your clean cut, but you can clean cut your other stuff. Sounds good. It's it's yeah, kinda that's, like it's not know. here or there. But yeah, yeah, I mean like there there are a lot of clean cuts out there. And I think the the big thing Rio's brought it up. It's like everything trifields do effectively now. Whether it's like on reverse Rickies or like filters or their their level one combos insane so they don't care about going down and uh hand at level zero. Okay, but but they they need to have the clean cut though. I feel like if they're not playing clean cut, this is fine. Because it's already three K just on its own. I don't and know. If, they don't if they're try field, fielding you get like a good advantage off it. Well that's the thing. I think they are going to try field a lot of the time. Well most I things you play into. You also have to take into account like what are you basing the arguments on? Are you basing it on, like, you know, a casual group? You're basing it on, like, I'm going to a normal regional? I feel like most of these ratings, tier ratings... Uh, I, I would want to base it on competitive. Like, competitive regional, regional and then you're yeah. going to... Ex these sets that we just named are good enough to be played at a competitive level, especially, like, Data Live being one of the top ones. And I feel like just by that argument alone solidifies the fact that you should expect to see clean cuts at least, if not every game, like one in, what, every other game. Data, data um, Live, ReZero, and Mainline Sal. So just by that argument alone, and it being only 3k power, because 35 is a, is, a, is a respectable threshold, and 4k is like, I guess, uh, you know, like where you want to be, so it's... It's not. It's not that. Like I think. I think it's just not that pressed. I would. I would like. I. I can't remember what color it is, but it's in this set. There's like a a thirty five hundred like, or four K beater or whatever in this set that um, that's probably outweighs this. Uh, shoot, you could even argue that a runner would suffice better. But yeah, this is a little rough. Mm -hmm. Uh, to justify. But yeah, the fact that you just get tri-fielded and it's worthless is uh, is a big point against it. All right, we can move on, Tyler. All right, uh, when this card becomes reversed, if the cost of the battle pen is zero or lower, put that into stock and put the bottom of stock into waiting room. And that's it. Card has a soul yep. trigger. Oh, soul trigger. oh yeah, the card does have a soul trigger. That's good for the Ooh. Alice combo. That is good for the Alice combo, actually. Yeah, that's really, really good. And just in choice decks in general, usually cost bombs don't have a soul, right? L level one's usually no. Soul, yeah. On a one zero, generally you don't have a soul trigger on cards. I like, like it. it. Yeah, I that's... think that's where like the power detriment's coming is for the soul trigger. I, Who think, cares well, I mean, like, on a bomb, you want like lower power is is. Oh well, no, I guess not. It doesn't really matter. It's only if you're trying to remove something with encore, but uh, and generally those are one ones. But well, well, no, it actually does matter a lot. Dealing with a uh, such a large portion of the field being slime with Shizu. Yeah, yeah you can slam climax. It, even if you're playing a climax at level one, you can still yeah, be thirty five yes, them or right. under them. So there, yeah, there would be the argument, right? Like, like. It's that's only 4K. This will be 35. 4K with um, your back row. 4K. I guess. I guess if you're if you're playing the wind deck, it'll go to 45. Unfortunately, but um, I think I would note that. I think in this day and age, I think 
bombs like this generally aren't ever worth it unless they have a second effect. I feel like if you're playing this, you're either like, for example, there's a y'all went over the green one, right? There's a green one in this uh, in this set. Uh, I feel that this is like your option. Like, okay, well, the meta has a lot of these encores, or like, say everyone's playing Shizu Slime or something, right? This is where, like, okay, well, I, I, I guess I could play. I can play this as a detriment to them, but it's not something that I would ever include in deck unless it was like absolutely necessary. Due to the fact that it just doesn't have another effect, right? Like, long have gone yeah. the days where, like, you have a. Uh, like the the prime example of a bomb in this current day and age is the soccer from fate right it does something useful on play and it's a bomb uh i think when you just have a bomb effect it makes it hard to put it in because that's like the same aspect as like a uh i don't really make them anymore but like level two or lower bombs uh level zero bombs like generally when you see these in people's decks they have another effect onto them so it's really hard to justify this uh as a I, I guess a good card, but it is a a card, and it does have a soul trigger, so it it has some uses and analyzations specifically. But I think in the grand scheme of things, it uh, you would always play the green perfect. bomb in this meta. Yeah. I think if you were in that well, color, I, I would I would argue actually that um, the soul trigger on this is the selling feature of it that would make you decide to play it. Right, unless you're the really fact that. You can run this as a one of in your choice decks, mm -hmm. or one or two of, and actually have like access to it. You can like salvage this. Um, oh. Not only being able to salvage something that's like meaningful, like a bomb, but also being able to salvage just something that you don't have to pay stock for. I mean, that's one of the drawbacks of choice, right? Is you have to take a higher level card that you might have. To, you're probably going to have to pay stock for. This lets you just take a card and then play it and not have to pay stock. I think you still only run this in the Alice Wind deck if you choose to run it at all. Because I think that green bomb... If we're talking I don't about think I'd like, run it in Alice Wind. I'd only run this card if I was playing Choice. I, I'm not even thinking about oh, that. No, like, not particularly Alice. like Because like the level... It's the level 1 combo, the new one, where it grabs stuff with soul triggers. That's where, like... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It gives you an option, like, oh, another yeah. playable for the next turn, right? If you're stuck at 1, right? Because most of your soul trigger cards can't even be played at level 1. This is one of them that could be played at 1. Mm -hmm. I just think mm -hmm. the green bomb, if we're talking about, like, Konosuba and Slime, the green bomb hates on them so much better. Because it hates on two lanes instead of just one. Uh, whereas this only hates on one lane. So, okay, so y'all gave the other one a B, a B, a B to B plus or whatever? Yeah, we were we were heavily uh, heavily skewed against, like, we're, we're very biased in Pittsburgh because we have a lot of Konosuma in slime. Alright, so, there you go. I'll, yeah, I'll go first. I, th I think it's literally only for the Alice 8 win deck. Yeah. I feel yeah. like I feel like a lot of, like, not to say that a lot of C cards are bad, it's just they're more so specific, like they're more so specific to certain builds, which makes them less useful overall, unless that specific build is the build you're going for. Yep. Yeah, like is the, is the is the play like two win regionals or et cetera, how, how far you want to take it. Yeah, for sure. All right, we can move on back to the top with Andy. All right, we got this uh, this Asuna. Uh, if you have the Asuna Yuki Ricky in your memory, this gets two abilities. Uh, during your turn, 3,000 power and hand encore. Um, I don't like it. Nope. 7,500 is nice, like it. but it doesn't sit big. Yeah, things like this generally are accompanied with this is back in the old days with costless walls and 2k to 25 to 35 level one counters. And the downside of this one is you need another card in, 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 in memory for this activate. So like, you're not even like the chance of you, like you swing, like this is more so a second turn level one play, if anything, because like, there's no guarantee you're going to get your Alice or sorry, your Asuna or Ricky into memory. So a lot of times this could only be 45 until the end of your turn. Uh, or I, I guess you can crash that first, but like I, I don't like cards like these. I don't like anymore because they just 
they don't serve much purpose anymore. Yeah, yeah it well. just doesn't it, do anything. It, it, oops, there you go. Uh, it's it, yeah, it's just. I it mean, feels you can give it the F. Them. It's almost there. <laughs> I, I I play the bomb we just mentioned before over this. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Not a fan. All right, Ryan. All right, we've got another Alice. Uh, level three cost two. If you have two or more other Fluck Lights, gains two thousand power. Sits at eleven five. When this card is placed on the stage from your hand, you may pay one and stock swap your opponent. It's a stock swap. It's nice that they have this now because I know people were sometimes attempting to try to splash Yui or some other weird things in order to get Stock Swap into their Alicization decks. This just clears up all those issues. If you don't have Stock Swap, your opponent gets to stare you in the face and say, I get to sit on a mountain of clean stock and there's nothing you can do about it. And I will cancel all your damage and you will not be able to play the game. Here's the thing though, do you care with Alice? If you're playing the Death by a Thousand Cuts, mm. burn one, 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 one finisher, you just chew your way through their compression. You still do. You do for one sole reason. It puts the fear in that if if opponent is seven and fifteen with no stock swap, there's a chance they just survive no matter what. Even if Arsenal burns seven, there's there's a chance that 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 they 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 stay alive. But with the stock swap threatening them, they may be on a more normal compression of like seven and twenty six. This also makes like your goal is not really like so like. I personally think in Weiss, your goal is not like solely to rely on your finishing power to kill the opponent. It's like you, because of stock swap, your opponent's like a lot more decompressed, meaning that your vanilla swings, like ideally you, it'd be nice if you killed everyone through sheer vanilla swings. That's not the point. I mean, that's not the, uh, I guess that's not like, that's why the finishers exist to where you can get through outside of vanilla swings. So I feel like stock swap is necessary in this current game because of how easily decks gain resources, how easily they plus. If you didn't have stock swap, you can. Most modern decks can literally just sit there with like eight to. They get 11 to disrespect stock. you. Yeah. And they like you'll see this with a. Uh... Well, I, mean, I guess this is what you saw back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, of Milky Homes, right? Of Guardian. Well, I mean, these are irrelevant to English, but a uh, uh, Conti or a TLR back in the day. When they just came out, like they can just sit there if they're like plussing and they can just like queue up a lot of stock. And or I guess Sal was the main like, like one that also did it too, like because they were like one of the only ones that had stock swap in the beginning and uh, until Kona Super got its second set. And uh, they they could have just sat there with stock and not care. Uh, Mm -hmm. That's how their standby deck got away with a lot of things. If you do not have stock swap, your opponent gets to look you in the face and disrespect you. Having stock swap in your deck, your opponent only has to see this card once to start playing around being stock swap. That alone is worth an inclusion in your deck as a one of. Yeah, I agree. Like the existence of this card, even if you like choose to big brain and not run it, means your opponent has to respect that you could get stock swap. Yeah, I was gonna say the fact that the set has it is usually enough. Well, yeah. it's a new, it's usually enough to fool the generic population or something. Maybe I don't know, but it's it's definitely not. It, like I think when you look at a high level like like level plays or like high level players, like they will pay attention to your cards and yeah. Generally, by your second refresh, unless you were like hoarding this in your hand from <laughs> the first turn, they're they're probably gonna see you don't have stock swap. So like right. they can probably make plays into it. Uh, yeah, I think I think like you know I mean. I think you True. still at least run one of two. Like it, it shows that it's around. So the fear of having a second one, because a lot of people do run two stock swaps. Uh, the fear of a second one, uh, just uh, it's it's pretty um, it's pretty scary in the sense that like they're not gonna sit there and have fifteen stock and you stock swap them and have like five climaxes in their stock now. Uh, this is this is definitely a card like as the opponent I would try to keep track of. Yeah, definitely. 100%. If you can get a read on how much they run and they, you know it's out, then I guess you can take advantage. But I mean, as you guys seen, this deck has so much ways of salvaging that unless this thing's stuck in clock, it's pretty easy to pick it up. Yeah, you can just grab it. So uh, the issue here, though, is like when it comes to grading, right? Like, has stock swap become so normal that now we grade it like stock swap is just like it's basically like I think I'd put this like 
you compare it to uh, like since I was like the whole set, the UE is a much better stock swap than this. Mm-hmm. But this is you know, what, what do you what do you like like what do you actually value a stock swap like in nowadays like in a generic sense like I what, what, what grade letter if it did nothing else what grade letter. Flat, I'm, I'm giving this B. card a B minus. Like a B, uh... Yeah. Yeah. So that's what you would give this because the 2K power is very irrelevant compared to Yui's a damage cry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yui's a lot better. And Yui also has a heavier cost. cost. Yeah. Uh, th- I would say this one because this one doesn't cost hand. You can play it alongside with your Asuna deck and whatever because you don't have to ditch two for a Yui and then yeah. ditch super Asuna. It makes it a lot better in this specific like shell, right? Because like the Flood yeah. shell that it doesn't cost hand. Yeah, while you could argue with the Alice finisher, the Yui would a Yui version of uh, Flucklight would have been cool because damage scries and you didn't it didn't cost you a stock. Yeah, you stock. could really two turn. You could really push the two turn strategy. Because uh, I do think damage scries are powerful. It's just it's very rare to see like usable ones these days. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but yeah it's it's, uh... it's good that Flucklight has one because I think it. Uh... Before, it was just like, oh, I can actually just stock compress because my opponent can't fuck with me. And yeah, yeah. You just literally have to rely that your Kirito ended them. Otherwise, it feels bad. Yeah. Tie score. Yep, pretty normal. Tyler, you got one for us? All right, there we go. All right, next card. There she is. She's here. All right, who has this one? I can't remember. Uh, you do. I do? Oh, okay. Alright, we got this Asuna. Uh, so, your other 1-0 Kirito combos uh, gain a uh, 1,000 power on turn, and uh, when they attack, you get to surveil top. So look at top, leave it there, put it in the waiting room. And it has pay one bond to your level 1 combo. Wait, wait, uh, wait. No, it's not surveil. It's You have to mill. When this attacks, mill a card. Oh, no. The So... If you're getting your translation of heart of the cards, they're completely wrong in the translation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say... Yeah, uh, they they uh, I've emailed them. I'm sure a lot of people have emailed them. They'll probably fix it eventually, like like with their data live cards. But it, it's actually a surveil. Like that's what the actual Japanese says. We've confirmed it with like multiple people that can read Japanese. Oh, okay, okay. It, 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 if it was just mill, I would actually just like it feel. It might feel a lot. It's probably a lot worse. Yeah, it feels go. a lot better now that we have that surveil on there. And I, I guess Definitely. if people don't get what surveil is, uh, you look at the top card of deck, you leave it there or put it in waiting room, at least for this effect. Uh, that's what it'll be. Um, it's like I, scrying, but cooler. It's kind of weird, because I guess we're going to talk about the Kirito eventually when we get to blue, but the Kirito, if you have experience 2 or higher, on attack, salvage. So I, that pairs really nicely with this. Uh, I think... Back in the day of like Modica, like Rebellion set or whatever, like we had the Apple, like people are running apples and stuff like that, where it's like you pay one bond to a wall. But this is pay one bond to your combo. It's like it's a pay one plus. Yeah, pay one plus is super good. To, to your combo, which is it's very rare to see cards like this anymore. Uh, this apples is the main combo's reason. really good. Yeah, this is the main reason why I'm favoring, like, I, I like for my Alicization deck that I, I use the level one characters because of this card because this allows you to make a lot of like high like uh or like crazy plays that you wouldn't do otherwise like you can literally ditch your level one combo early so you have a better zero game and just get it back because you're on the leaf of brainstormer that also salvages this grab bonds from the waiting room i guess that's what bonds are normally anyway mm-hmm. i think uh this is only good because the character existed uh and it's a bond i think um it, it it works really nice, uh, and I guess it's something that I guess, you know, could be showcased. I guess in videos for people to see how good it is. But I I really appreciate this card. It's like you're not reliant on your Ricky. You're not real. You're not like you're not really reliant on oversizes surviving or your runner surviving another turn. You literally can be like, ah, oh, yeah, pay one plus. And the cool thing is the character combo salvages. You can literally salvage this card from your waiting room. And then when your Kirito's die on the backswing, you just get them back and you can combo again for only one stock instead of paying three and encoring. I think that's pretty... Uh, very nice, yeah. Pretty nice. And the surveil ability is, is what's really good. It means that your, all your combos at least would be able to prevent themselves from 
a higher chance of preventing you from triggering climaxes. From or if you see your nice salvos target, you, you can ditch it. Or for the sole fact that it digs one extra card, which getting to your second deck could matter a lot. Because it, it would mark that I... Bl- uh, these do stack, right? Because if you have two of them, you just yeah. do an order, right? You surveil once, then you surveil a second time. Yep. So, yeah, like, they that's, would stack, yeah. That, that's something to, to, uh, to note as well, that like you have two of these... You, you you have one of these and triple Kirito is only three mils, but you have two Kiritos and two of these. That's four mils. Like that's that's also uh. It also, that's also to know. a single copy of this makes your Kiritos attack in at eight k, which is right. uh, also just like hitting over standby and shit like that. Yep, yep. Because Kirito is forty five, fifty five on turn climax, sixty five. No, this will be seventy five, and then I guess your center one will be eight k if you have a brainstormer. Oh yeah, I thought I saw fifteen. It's just a thousand, yeah. Uh, but still, uh, you're at least trading with standby targets. Because if you notice these days, a lot of standby decks do not have a super high abundance of level one counters, meaning that they're if you match them, you gain more because they have to ditch a card while you you plus the card to kill them. I guess. Yeah, I mean, you got to keep in keep in mind too that if they use the counter now, that's one less counter they have later. True that. Uh, but if you have so multiple, you can word better later. Yeah, if you have multiple, though, I guess you can, in theory, pump your Kirito as much as you want. If you want to get over one target, I don't know, you can prepare for it or something, I guess. Like, it's just pretty weird. But yeah, it just allows a very aggressive playing at zero, too, right? Like, you have a lot of hand because you can rely on a pay one plus or you can mulligan uh, more aggressively because of this card. Uh, All right, like so a- maybe yeah. a bit of a counterpoint here. Um, is the knee so I love Apple Bonds, love them. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the reasons why something like Apple Bond was like such a strong tool in Madoka, like earlier in this game's history, right, is the fact that they didn't have like a Ricky. This set has two Rickies you could run. I feel like the need for Apple Bond is, um, it's lessened less of a need for Apple Bond since you can just Ricky, which is Apple Bonding, but clocking for a damage. But still, you're paying one getting the card you want. I think... So is Apple Bond even a selling point when you have such good Rickies in the set? I think the selling point is the fact that the Ricky generally, it makes it's because especially the Alicization Ricky, since we're talking about the set, is very very low value as the game goes on for its Ricky effect because of it needs to be reversed or it, it needs to be sent to waiting room. Uh, and I feel like, do you really like there are going to be a lot of game states like where you need to plus, but do you really want to just Ricky or would you rather pay one and not clock yourself to get it? I think, I think the net, I think, I think. This this only like the argument's only worth it because of how much it does for the level one combo. Like right, if it was just a bond, I think it would be a lot worse. And I think you could make that argument that well, you know, we can just play four Rickies and call it a day. Mm-hmm. But I think that the fact that it's bond, the chance of you getting triple dramatically skyrockets because not only can you Ricky it early on, but you can bond to it if you if it's not in the waiting room for your Ricky because your Ricky's not a search Ricky. So therefore. For you, ricking your combo, it, it you know it kind of makes it a little bit harder that early into the game. So, uh, it, I think I think uh, the fact is that like a lot. Another thing, right? Let's say you don't even have your combo like climax. Like you can literally instead of ricking back for your combos, you can literally just play these and pay one back for them, or pay one to keep your hand up until you can get out of the situation again. So I think like you could you could just play it like a normal Apple Bond. You can just play like a normal Apple Bond. I think that's uh that's the power here. I think I think because it does so much for the Kirito is the reason why I would say that it's worth running it and Ricky's together in the same set. Uh I think if it was just a bond, I think that's where your argument is a lot I guess easier to convince like convince me I guess specifically <laughs> that uh that it's not worth it because then all it is is a bond. Like, well, I I can just run eight rickies, six rickies, twelve rickies, eight rickies, six like four. 
15 True. movies. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, you make a really good point. The fact that this does more than just Apple Bond. It's giving power to clear your opponent's bigger characters. It's giving the uh, surveil effect to help you trigger Klain. Especially good in multiples. I'm just viewing this as it's eight copies of your level one combo. That it's you can recur throughout game, the yeah. game. Like, it's. I think that's invaluable if you're running something and, like this. And, and, you recur and it this, forever. Its scry ability doesn't need Kirito to use its combo. The Kirito can just like use a surveil ability just off of this alone, which is. <laughs> Even without the combo, it works. Like yeah. Period, yeah. So, yeah. like, you can fix up your triggers or, like, know your triggers. Uh, you can plan out a lot of things with it. Like, there are a lot of times where I've taken uh, pants or choices because I saw the trigger and it's like, oh, it's the last one. You know, instead of milling it, I can just, you know, leave the climax at the very bottom and get the full value off of it. Like, it's, uh, it's really good. Like, I, I think if... You're playing the level one combo, Kirito. I think that this is whatever you rate the level one combo, Kirito, is what this rating would be. It's like because I think they work side by side as like as one, rather than like you know, as a separate card to it, like a, like a, like a normal Ricky would work to a, a random card. No, yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, I, I, I'm like on the same boat there. I think this is like an auto include if you're playing the uh, Kirito combo. For sure. Um, as, as someone who sat down against this card a couple times, uh, I can tell you uh, it's pretty insane the lines your opponent is able to make. Uh, that I'm going back and seeing what I rated the, uh, rated the Leafa combo before I look at this one. I think we, I think we gave Leafa also an A. You guys gave it an A, I gave it an A+. Plus. I, I think the combos are like... They do very, very different but um, similar power levels. Mm-hmm. I think they, they build different like early and mid-game shells, uh, but I think power, power-wise, power yeah. they can be pretty similar. Because like, the carry toe on his own... One's a selective search, one's a selective salvage. Well, they're both salvages, but the, huh. um, they're both salvages, but the carry toe is on attack, oh, really? requires a little bit more of a setup, but also has like all these payoffs so like you know it depends on what you want to run yeah probably preference whatever color you need to be in this is definitely like much more aggressive uh even though the other one is off bar yeah uh the fact that you can threaten to just continue to do this turn after turn after turn without it impacting you in any way is uh incredibly strong yeah but the fact that there is a pay one bond to this level one combo is uh is massive that's I'm That's gonna be honest. I thought the Leafa was a thought was a search. No, That's no. A salvage. Salvage. It is salvage. I think you, I still like the Leafa a little bit better, but you can argue though that salvage is probably uh, better uh, in some senses because there's a higher possibility. Like in the worst of the worst, there are more times where your waiting room is not empty. Which the deck has searchable targets that you want. So I kind of like the Leafa on a salvage. I kind of like salvages because they're better as game goes as the game goes on. A lot of times. You always know so what's like, in your grave. It, it was more so being like a chew two. Sort of like you can stack them all on one lane and then like fire all the searchers off at the end would be really nice. For deck. Oh, that, that, that's also cool. Like yeah. But um me... the the card doesn't search, it's a moot point. I read it wrong. But I still think I like the other one better, but this is still really good. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I think the only hit against this package in general. Uh, which I think should be brought up before we move on is the um the the number of deck slots, right? Slots eating yeah. eight. I, think I was thinking the same thing. Like, if you're on a, this, one of the benefits to Leafa is yeah, a lot less. If you're on slot. this, it's eating eight slots because I think you want to max out on it for sure. Because of, I, I do think so. Yeah. Yeah. So I th- I think it comes down to what you want to do with the deck. I think they're both great options. If you have the deck slots, I think the Kirito does have the ability to probably be stronger as the game goes on. But um, they both hold their value throughout the game because the Leafa can give its effect to another target. So, uh, Yeah. They, what is the, what's the Kirito combo off of? What's the climax? Gate. Pants. pants or yeah. Gate or pants, yeah. Whatever you're going to yeah. call it. Okay, okay. 
But I feel like that helps the choice deck more. I feel like if you're not playing the choice finisher, you can you can like, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think I think I mean it really doesn't matter what climax you use, but I, I do think like pants helps feeds into the choice while bar you don't have the gold bars clogging your hand and like not going back into your next deck. And when we get to blue, we can talk about more of the uh, the advantages of Kira's combo there because of blue being at level one. Yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, the deck slots is definitely a thing, right? Like, there may come a time where we need a bunch of techs or we need certain cards, and maybe that is time where you go for, like, the on-reverse combo, but those four extra slots could help you fit for stuff. Yeah. Uh, I do specifically think, though, that, like, the awesome level three works with the Kirito too good, but, like, the bar can feed into any top end. Yeah, no matter, matter what you choose. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, we can move on. Talk about the Kirito more when we get to blue. All right, uh, who's up? I think this is Riaz. Riaz, yep. I think, yeah. Me. All right. What? What is this? Uh, this is this one. I patch here. Alice. All right, there we go. So if there's a marker under this, this card gains two thousand power when this is placed from hand to stage. Reveal top card deck. If it is a flux light character, you may pay. It. You may put it face down. Under this is a marker. Uh, I, mean, I guess if you don't uh, put it back where it was, and this card cannot be chosen by effects when they look for Asuna in Kana in the game uh, in the name. Uh, hmm. I mean, this is like the better option that I was talking about earlier. That like if you want to play like an oversize, this is probably uh. The option, if you uh, don't mind, um, I mean, it, it, if you wanted to be on color and you wanted to be Integrity Knight and you wanted to be a uh, uh, Flucklight, uh, it's just like I don't know. It's not much to say about cards. Like these like they're all they're all like valuable to some point. Like it's just like the 4K Bricoli from the first set. Yeah. It's like the it's like you know any Bang Dream oversize that you want to run. I, it's just another way. Uh, I it. I, I don't have anything bad to say about it. I don't have anything good to say about it either. It's just like it's become such a standard that all decks, all sets that come out generally have a card to like to this. Like it's either 2k power, it's either 15 and a level, it's either 2k and a level if it's alone. Like it's it's just how you want to plus a zero, right? That's all it comes down to. How do you want to plus a zero? Do you trust oversizes? Here's your here's your uh, person. Uh, so 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 is this. Better than a normal Futaba. I I think think it's 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 like it's nowadays, the, rev- the marker stuff. Marker yeah, stuff, like the, Futaba the, profile, yeah. Yeah, th- thirty-five and a level as opposed to four K is what we're. I think Whoa. the four K Futabas are fine. I think I th- the four Ks might be better right now because, like, how many? There's a lot of people running thirty-five hundred power stuff right now. There's a lot of trading going on. Suiciders are people hmm. running. That's suiciders true. are very rare, right? Like, like you, because the, it goes back to what I was saying. Like, unless the suicider has a like a different effect, which right now in English there isn't that many suiciders with a good effect. Like, Bang Dream has one, right? Like the one where like if it's if all cards are reversed or or like they, you can pay one and like rest it or something. Uh Bang Dream's like notable for having being like one of the sets that has like good suiciders. But in English, the there's tiers. rarely any good suits. Like Data Life has the one that jumps the stock, but a lot of Data Life decks don't play it, especially. Dow doesn't really play it usually. AOT has theirs. AOT is probably one of the few sets that play it, but I mean, I also think AOT uh, is not something you'll see every single round any anymore. Uh, so I, I feel like I feel like you know whatever whatever you guys normally rate oversizes, that's what this would be. It's just it's. And to answer your question, is 2K better, 4K better than like 35 in a level or something? I do think so, uh, currently, because a lot of cards, uh, like a lot of, it's it's hard for a lot of these. If you notice these clean cuts, a lot of them are 2K or 2.5 power, and they somehow like get power up to 35, or like they don't get power and they have to play a power pump. I feel 4K makes it a lot harder for those clean cuts to get over. You know what I've been noticing a lot of too, a lot of like Rickies that just get to 3,500. Like maybe like the Finn and Jake Ricky in Adventure Time or uh Slimes isn't a Ricky, I don't think, but the one uh Chloe that gets to thirty five hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 uh like there's a lot of stuff that jumps to thirty five hundred on turn and they can trade with your Futaba where 
you would win the interaction here. Another another thing though with Futaba, I think she needs to currently be in the center slot, right? No, it's like uh, it's literally just the marker thing. So, oh, okay. in, in comparison to normal oversizes that are just 4K, uh, I prefer the Futaba profile just because you don't have to marker the card. Uh, so it has some utility going into the later game. Whereas, you can set up five card brainstorms. Yeah, and shit it's like, like that. otherwise, uh, you know, your oversize just becomes like a chumper. It just becomes a useless card. Well, uh, I mean, this one's the same way too, right? You don't have to marker it. Yeah, exactly. So. I gave it like the B minus instead of like, you know, just normal oversize or whatever. It's uh, it's, it's got its value later. So true that, true that. All right, we can move on. Tyler. All right, we got another eye patch, Alice. Uh, when this is placed in the hand of stage, ditch two. If so, all your opponent's front row characters get X power at minus X power for the turn. Uh, return all the cards in your waiting room to your library. Shuffle your deck. Shuffle your deck. Yeah, shuffle your deck. And X equals the number of climax cards in your waiting room. Times five hundred. <laughs> Times five hundred. Yeah. What? So it's a free fresh. That free fresh. Your discard two cards. Free fresh yourself and neg your opponent's field five hundred power. Yeah. Times it, the number of climaxes you shuffled back. It rewards you more for. Refreshing with more climaxes in waiting room. So that's really so interesting. Pretty interesting uh, card. I think uh, it it will see play a lot if the meta gets to a point where there's a lot of utilities when transitioning from zero to one. You can like, I guess, if you really wanted to, legit ditch two cards and just like if you have two, like a lot of five hundred power cards. If they have like you literally just nuke their like front row or something, but. I think I think the main selling point obviously is like you know, here is a way to free fresh. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I guess it's a ditch two free fresh. I think a lot of free fresh like there's either ditch two or pay two or one zero events that do something, but it's a uh, at least it ditches a, cards. You can get it at climaxes. It's an option, right? It's a uh, it, it, it's really hard to like what what I want to rate this card because like I'm playing the Austin finish. This card's completely like counterintuitive to the Asuna finisher because it, mm -hmm. it lowers you down to only one Asuna finisher when you, you're better off just playing two and hoping the second one builds something better. But then at the same time, it could help you like earlier in the game, right? Like at level one, at level two. So Depending like, how climb, many climaxes you shuffle back, that could be a lot of power minus to their field. Right, it, it could be the difference. Like you, you shuffle back in, like let's say at least three on average, like at level one or two or something, you can... Uh, you can um, literally like probably climb over your opponent's board, but I feel like early on is when you want a plus, and this is like an emergency switch. But like if you're already doing so bad, it like it ditches too. So like it, you you may be in a like a terrible situation, but like I, I don't know, it's it's really hard. But it's definitely a, an option that like Alice Edition can actually play a, a card to refresh your deck. So the fact that it's so like deck state dependent for the uh, minus power effect is a little bit uh, concerning. If I could see this being really good at like clearing your opponent's early plays and shit, like oh yeah, I'm gonna shuffle like a bunch of climaxes back at a nice free fresh and kill your early plays. I just but at like that point in the game, you could have refreshed and playing your early seems, plays, you know, two or less early plays. So I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I I don't think this card is very good. I'm I'm actually gonna yeah. drop it down. I think that ditch two. Even if you can ditch climaxes, it forces you to sculpt this card into your hand, then ditch climaxes as well. So I don't even think that's actually a factor in like considering it. I just see the cost of ditch two. I'm ditch two to free freshing for an effect that may or may not be good. It only hits my opponent's front row. Um, yeah, if this hit back row, oh my god, I might actually like. Yeah, it's it be oh, yeah, insane. That'd be, that'd be dumb, yeah. Like a but, one zero five hundred body, it doesn't do anything else. Like it's a very costly. I don't know. I'm not a fan. Yeah, I'd rather if it was like on play pay two or something. I'd rather that rather yeah, than yeah, definitely. Than this. So it's it's unfortunate, but I don't even play this in my deck, and because I just I I just don't I don't yeah. see the any time where this is actually useful. I'd rather just milk double brainstorm at that point. That might have been more useful. 
<laughs> yeah, I would rather like double That's brainstorm true, yeah. through my I'm gonna diet. be honest. I I don't think I'd play this either, but I I think the fact that it is a free fresh option. It, yeah, that's, that that's could why I'm up there devastate on their you. board. It, it's there when the time needs it. If we ever get sets that resemble Psychono in English, I guess here you go, boys. You can ditch two to ruin someone's life. <laughs> yeah, just remove all their memory cards. But yeah, right. moving on. Oh, uh, another good art. Yeah. All right, we got um. The girls at the beach uh, with a marker. This gets 2,000 power and on play, reveal top card of your deck. If it's a fleck light, you can put a face down under as a marker. This is. Wow, this looks familiar. <laughs> this is like the last card, but. No. Nope. Swimsuits. It's nope. Um, it's. Don't think this. I think that one zero, zero. I think at level one, it's not worth it. No, no form of high guy or whatever is good enough. Yeah, that's a boring card. Anymore. Pretty whatever. Another art wasted. Yeah, dude, they they gave a terrible art to the good combo, like Kirito, but they they, they give us like this art for. Yeah, yeah. Kirito looks hella constipated in that uh, combo. Like like I I'm 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 getting four of OFRs one way or another. I'll find a way to get four of them. So yeah, the I, OFR I, looks good. Yeah, I I am not playing with Gabriel on my deck. I'm sorry. <laughs> So that was the only set where you ever see me like try to max rarity because the only set I own hollows for. I mean, the the art changes are so much stronger. There's no reason not to. Hmm. We can just hop right to the next one. All right, we've got uh, Akihiko Kaiba's girlfriend. Uh, Boilers. What they? <laughs> That's in uh, like ordinal scale or something. Whatever. Hey, 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 hey man. Hey, man. That's like saying Super Saiyan Goku is a spoiler. I guess you're right. Uh, it's been it's been a year. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> not an incel, dude. Good for him. Oh yeah, we like. Why do you try to kill all those people then? <laughs> Turns himself into a robot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, but that's actually too spoilery. <laughs> Calm down, kid. Okay. Right, so two one twenty five hundred. On play, uh, mill three. If you hit a climax, choose one of your opponent's level two or lower characters and kill it. Do not like it. Yep, that's a boring F. card too. <laughs> I, I would not see a reason to play this card yeah. at all. Yeah, just, just, just give me an just give me an anti change bomb. That'd probably be more useful. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is like actually, worse actually, than yeah. an anti change yeah. bomb. It's an anti change bomb that can't even hit early plays. Uh. I think there's maybe some merit to running something like this. I've run something similar in Grisaya before. There's like a 2-1, then on play you kill a level 0. But that's like guaranteed. You don't have to mill for it. Just as a way to like have a level 2 to help. The reason I played that card in Grisaya, right, is because I was trying to meet an experience requirement. And the card had a 2 in the corner. <laughs> and there's also a way that you could like aggressively play like a card. Yeah, but you don't need Play an aggressively costed level 2 to like trade 1 for 1 with your opponent and push pressure that way um but i think this card's a lot worse and i mm. think there's a lot better ways to reach experiment experience requirements in a this set yeah yeah i think I, the point I, of this card was just to troll someone's back i'm not gonna lie it's just to snipe people yeah i mean i guess if you're going uh going all in on that data live eight wind hate deck you can kill their tutus with this i mean I, I honestly don't think it's like it's not an f tier card i think like there's like a reason you'd maybe want to play this no it's it's just not consistent and i i disagree <laughs> i i don't know i, I that's I, my I, spicy I, opinion it's okay you can disagree it, with it. it yeah it's it's fine i think this card's completely off trait or is it net i i don't I know what trait is uh Ooh, i think it's, yeah, net. it's net it's net i see net right there yeah oh it's not even for the fluck light deck <laughs> oh i guess it's for mainline so Nice. Just what they needed. Yeah, it's net science trait. All right, whatever. Next, uh, Austin and her they're fucking. What is this? this? Is Alice and her sister? Uh, it is a level assist, and it is a rest to search brainstorm. Yeah, I don't. I don't really care for these type of cards. Well, it's well, worth what? it's worth noting that Alice is like Sal Alice is like kind of scuffed for back row supports. If you wanted uh, to play it, uh, this is like a standby target. 
Maybe. Yeah. It's like an incidental Maybe. standby it, target. It, it, I'll it's just upgrade my brainstorm. So... It's just like if you're this is like the level assist you play if you're not running green because if you're running green there are so many better level assists. Yeah, there's better oh, yeah. level assists. Than like the one, the one from set one is so much better. Set one, even the the two one, Fan, Fantino, whatever her name is, uh, one that reads integrity night. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. It's, it, but then I I just feel like level assists like this have become less relevant as time goes on. Like it's it's always been like two k or higher as uh. Sorry, uh, level threes get two K power, and then there's like another effect tacked onto level. So this, this other effect is brainstorm. And it's not even tap self. It's tap. It's tap two. Tap two, yeah. So yeah, it makes it's, even, it's pretty it makes it whatever. less desirable. Bruh, you're playing yellow. Just play some wind triggers. You know what I'm saying? You don't need the. <laughs> you don't need the power. power. Just just play a tornado. It's uh, it's fine, I guess. Whatever you rate a standard level assist, this is just slightly better because it has a brainstorm on it. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, yeah. All right, Riaz, you don't have to waste your turn on this. This is a two two fucking eleven k. Yeah, dude. Stand by. Yeah, if you're playing standby, it's it, it's it's probably it's you know. It, it's it's but in the whole generic scheme of things, it's it's. She's whatever. big. She's blonde. She's got. It, it, it's, it's just it's just an na. It, it's just not after. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess if you were just rating it, it'd probably just be like C or something. Yeah, but, you don't have to rate it, yeah. You can just read the next one. You can read this Alice with the glasses. Uh, let me get here. All right. And, uh, another good-looking oh, card with, uh, good with with effects that are probably may be irrelevant. Uh, when this is placed from hand to stays, draw two, ditch two, and stock one card from the top of your library. Uh, when this is placed from hand to stage, it gets 1,500 power per turn, and then pay one. When it's placed from hand to stage, you may choose a character in your opponent's waiting room and put it in an empty slot on their stage. Uh, I think this card is completely useless in the grand scheme of things, and the only set where this would would even be useful is like you're playing the original Kirito Yuji finished from the first set. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, seems... there are so many better like cards. Yeah, that's that third effect's not irrelevant. Like if they don't leave you a reverse, you can force a reverse this way essentially. Right, right. right. You, that, that's what you I was need saying. to be playing a combo that requires a reverse. You could get real cheeky too and put a level one out there and get a nice side attack. I, I guess. But sure. If you think of, if you think about it, most of the cards in this day and age, like the meta we're moving towards, if we even have tournaments, there it's a really high board based like type of play. If it's not standby, it's a bunch of early play healers, like Konosuba or Slime. Like it's gonna be really hard for you to find an open slot uh, a lot of times. I feel like unless you were already winning board, if you were the standby deck. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like this isn't for every deck. I think if you're playing a deck that a build that needs a reverse at level three, yeah, and your opponent might not always be giving it to you, uh, this can be a real nice one of. Right, I'm, okay. I'm a big fan of the draw two, ditch two, stock one. Helps you draw into your combo, light on your stock. Right. You play two, like that's what I said, it works with the Kirito, right? You play two Kirito, let's draw two, drop two, drop two, drop two, and you play this, draw two, drop two, stock one, and you have enough for your combo, and you have enough, and you have at least one reverse. Uh, so, like, it, it has a vi- this is the viability only with that deck. For, speaking of Alicization specifically, that's the only deck where it's viable, and if you're playing that top end. Is this a, is this a Flucklight? Trait, yes. There's this avatar now. Yes, Block light integrity night. Oh, you're breaking my heart. I wish there was avatar net on this. C minus. It's niche. It's only for that thing, and it's not that great. Yeah, like literally yep. that one scenario where it's good. Oh uh, yes, I too love good art and effects that feel bad. Tyler, you're up. All right. Uh. When this is placed from hand to stage, put the top two cards of your deck in the waiting room and gains X power based off of number of flux like characters you mail. And during this card's battle, if damage is cancelled, you may bounce this back to hand. If damage you are dealt is cancelled when they're attacking you. Oh, uh-huh. so this card reads that you eat damage in this lane. <laughs> yeah. Notably, this denies reverses as battle damage is before combat. Yep. I would so, never play this card. 
uh, you don't ever play this card now. I think that's like similar to a coin flip, right? No. It's I worse mean, than a coin flip. I know, but you have to you have to cancel and whoever coin cancels flips are Weiss. coin I, flips are non interactive. Who cancels at zero in Weiss? Nobody. This is interactive. I, 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 what, what do you mean? I do. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What are you talking <laughs> I about? I just eat everything until I'm one six. When this card is on the board, it reads I eat damage in this lane, no matter how much. I think yeah. when it comes to cards like this, one of the two effects have to be viable, and in this situation, the most viable effect is the one that jumps the stock if you cancel. But then the second effect is so useless most of the time that yeah, it's really whatever. It's like why, like, like if you want a, a, a some kind of damage cancel stock charge, you can just use the first that's Alice uh, filter. Yeah, right? that so card's a filter, a lot and he could jump the stock possibility if your opponent cancels damage. It means that it reads that you know. Free stock, or your opponent just eats damage. Easy. I like yeah. the uh, when your opponent plays a climax, go to stock. Better yeah, than I love this. those cards. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is this is so so much worse. Amazing art, art, such good it, art. Why, why could it, it be the oversized art, man? Yeah. Why why does it have to be wasted on this? All right. Um, Andy, you get robot guy. We got robot man. I won't spoil it for you. Who this is? Uh. During your opponent's turn, when this is reversed in battle, the joke was that you fuckers already spoiled it. The biggest spoiler in the show. Not really. Uh, during your opponent's turn, when this is reversed in battle, you can clock yourself if you do rest this, and then at the beginning of your next encore phase, he uh, offs himself. Um, it's an alright card. I mean, most pack filler and Weiss is okay, but you're not going to play this. I think it's pretty bad. Unless you're, unless you really like a robot, robot guy, man. And maybe you play him. Robot guy, bad, has bad been robot dope. man. You might as well just use the on reverse rookies at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like whatever. At least that gives you selection to what you want. Yeah, yeah better, better plus than this. If you're clocking yourself, he already. doesn't even stay alive. He just no, dies he dies at, at the end. <laughs> well, that's flavor. Go watch the show. It it is flavor. He yeah, this back. is a flavor card. All right. Uh, Alright. What the heck was this guy's name? It's uh it's twenty-two. Uh Higa. Uh when this card's placed on the stage from your hand, you can clock the top card of your deck. If you do, choose a cost zero or lower character with Kirito or Kazuto in name from your waiting room and put it on any slot of your stage. It is a summoner Ricky for Kirito's at level one. Yeah. Yeah. This card is fucking terrible. <laughs> it's a little bit better than our previous one, but still it, not. Like... It is better than the last card. It'll yeah, still I... never be used, though. No, you have other yep. rookies you play. I think it's F plus, uh... yeah. You yeah, have F plus. Bad. <laughs> you have, you have Dude, this guy looks like the fucking the like Isekai self insert character. Like, not the main character, though. You know what I mean? Like, you're not Kirito. You're not like the badass. You're just like it's some fine. random person. Like, like if I was died and reborn into Sword Art, this would be me. It's just fucking. <laughs> This guy. I wouldn't be the main character. I'd just be back in my hometown. <laughs> this guy's just like a Kirito simp. <laughs> Alright, we got a guy with glasses. Oh my god. Uh, he's wearing a fucking robe. Uh, if you attack a level 2, <laughs> this card's a 10-5. Um, Dude, look at those hexagonal glasses. Does this guy These even have... Dope. Wait, Brian, what are the traits? Uh, let me see. Oh yeah, the last one we just looked at is uh, he's net trait. Uh, this guy is um, he's probably also net something. Looks like the yeah, same net, kanji. He's, he's net glasses. No way, really. Yeah. Uh huh. F. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> like, like glasses we, trait unplayable. If we actually like, I don't even know. Like, the, like cards like this like are mainly specifically attack like standby two twos, but you don't stay at that phase for so long that it just I don't know the timing. You is know what so the other cool. issue is you don't even get over it. You tie them. Yeah, it's a ten it's seven, five. Six, seven, eight, eight, ten five. Oh no. Yeah, the ten oh, five is hella rough. That is. Oh uh, yeah, it's specifically level twos. Also, I didn't even realize. Yeah, not even not even twos or twos or. Well, not, two, 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 yeah, actually, it has to be two because it can't be two or lower because then, then it would actually be like getting over ones as well, I guess. Yeah, then it I would mean, be I a guess good card. Like, we can't have that. W with a climax, you get over a ten five. Well, with any sort of pump, actually. Garbage. And you get to do that for costless, which 
why I'm not giving it the F, but uh, Hard's pretty sad. All right, he does have cool glasses. You got this climax combo. Who, me? No, it's Riaz's turn. I just read the last oh, one. Oh, climax combo. Uh, when God or is placed to your climax zone. If this is in the front row and you have four or more other fuck like characters, you're going to put characters for that turn. That character gets next 200 to 2000. Uh, this is where you know you triple combo and you just kill five cards in your opponent's board. That's his only use. It, it hits back row. Yeah, uh, you kill the front row with it and then you kill the back row and then <laughs> your opponent like cries, but then you cry because then guess what? You, if you quad field this, you, you only get plus. three because uh, it has to be in front row to trigger yeah. or to burst your bubble. Rip. Like it, I, it, I, I, I don't know. It doesn't even plus you. This, this is like, I mean, like I think. Hold up. Hold up. Does the does the god or does that have like another combo? No. No. no it doesn't. Nope. Oof. It, F's in the chat. It's choice. Yeah, this card it. sucks. <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> Why is it's this on just, choice? It, I, uh, yeah, I, 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 it's just for those who want to play Asuna and enjoy their Asuna decks. It's, it's definitely yeah. a viable option. You well, can look at this cool comment I pulled. <laughs> I, I can cheese out wins by negging, you know, like their entire like back row, and then like one of their front rows, and then then your opponent just loses five cards, and you pray that they, uh, they don't just play a brainstorm this and hit like, four the next turn. This is like the worst. Your friend, she's like trying ever. to get in the games, like how how cheap can I make a deck for? And you're like, oh, look at that pack you just opened. You already got your level one combo. You're like halfway there, dude. <laughs> I guess I should give props to Bushra for making a a combo, but on on the sad part is that a lot of tr the trial deck combo from the first set is better than this. Oh, yeah, so only like a lot. Well, you, you know what? Actually, like maybe they're trying to support like more of a like a draft format. Like they had like a no, they're not draft style <laughs> format. Like at one point they're working on this would be a good card for a draft. This would be a good card to have in a pack. I guess yeah. if it yeah, came sure. with its climax it's a combo, fantastic card in draft. <laughs> Oh, you you get the card, but you don't get the climax. Feels bad. Yeah. Get <laughs> well, you grab it at the end. You're only grabbing the climax if you grab this. It's the way Weiss drafts work. It's the way our Weiss draft it's worked draft at card, one dude. point. All right, whatever. Uh, three five talk, counter. Talk, talking like Weiss drafting is a nobody wastes their turn. Remember. It is a thirty five hundred counter for Fluctlight. Oh, it's yeah. nice art. You, you need power. It is good art. <laughs> Big power. Big Yoshi. Uh. All right, Tyler, you got this one. One. Uh, okay. During your turn, she gets ten thousand power. Oh, big, that's a big, lot of power. Big, big. That's awesome. a lot of power. <laughs> Actually, I, I kind of like this compared to like a normal um, early play killer. Yeah, I think uh, this is actually quite a bit better. Does since kill you can anything. Kill standbys. I mean, it literally kills anything ever. almost. It's just oh, you got to counter a specific meta. Here you go. You got it. This is actually fine. This is a fine card. Yeah, this is totally yeah. okay. Stick with it two gets, Cs. It gets, the passable. it gets the passable one for me. All right. The, the next one, oh my god. Uh, back to the top, Andy. You, you <laughs> can... All right. Ooh, a 2-2 two -two counter. What? Uh, For 4,500? <laughs> nope. And that's it. Yep, yep, <laughs> that's it. Vanilla 4,500 counter. I don't I mean, think I've even seen a card like this before. Yeah, the, has be this honest, ever existed I would like before? This would be better if it had like two soul. I don't know why this card doesn't have two souls on it because it is a two two. It should have two souls. If it was like a two two one k with two souls, I'd actually like the card. But um, two two one soul, uh, unplayable. Big Yoshi. <laughs> yeah, big Yoshi. Doesn't even give you the option to pay one to get more power. It's like, nah, you're forced into two two. Here you go. Yeah. Way too, way too much. All right, last card, Give Brian. Give right. <laughs> <laughs> What? All right, and to close it out, we have Reproduction of the Soul, the yellow event. 2-0, uh, choose a character in your waiting room with the same name as a card on your board or on your opponent's board and return it to your hand. Spicy in the mirror. <laughs> How do you evaluate a card like this? Uh, I think it's bad. Did I, 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 I? It's it's probably better than the F we gave the this the the, the other one, but like it, I, I I don't know, like like why, like I don't see, like I can't even find a situation where you play. This is like poor man's like salvage or something. I I, I don't know where you would like even put. Okay, them. well obviously all the cards in your deck are good, so you play four copies of them. Oh, exactly. 
So right. if you have one on field, you probably have three in your grave. Yeah, and you can't wait to run into a mirror match of Alicization when Data Live is running around. You see a card like this, and you see 2-0, and then you look at a card like PDF's 2-0 uh, event uh, from the Japanese set, and you're like, why, Bushy? Like, why does this card even exist? Like, what's the... Imp- I can't even salvage two characters. You play it and salvage a copy of your Kurumi from your waiting room. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, they have a Kurumi? Looks like I'm I'm going to salvage my... <laughs> this, would be, this, would be my so mu- this would be so much more dank if you could steal your opponent's card. It would be. Oh, oh big eye? Okay, okay, big eye. I see now. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. I, I, this is just bad cards. I don't, I don't even want to rate it. Yeah, no. Rating my big game is much credit. F? I don't know. F? Question mark? Man, if you could bond to this, this would still suck. <laughs> That's the sad part. Like, if this yeah. was a 1-0, you, you, could, you could make some sort of argument that I can get more level 1 combos or something, but at 2-0, like, why? I, I just used my 1 combo to sculpt. Why do I need this card? Get more thick asanas. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can get right? thick yeah. asanas. Oh, you can also get um, give thick asanas. Yeah. I, 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 I got it. You play the 2 2 counter on the front row and you play this and get a free leg room. There you go. Then you protect oh my it. God, that's like unlimited value, dude. That's like unlimited counters. I figured it out. All right. So, standout right cards up. from yellow. We got Memory Ricky, uh, yep. Early Play, Asana yep. Finisher, Alice Finisher, if you choose to go that route. All the win cards, win support. Uh, and then the stock swap and the bonder to the bonder, uh, yeah. the apple bonder, and after that things start to fall off. There's a free fresh, free fresh is pretty spicy, but uh, those are the big hit cards from yellow. Uh, I know a lot of people like when we go over the hit cards at the end so that they know what to go out and buy four copies of on release. Mm-hmm. I always like to do it, uh, but yeah, yeah, I think that's it for yellow. Yeah, don't forget about this event. Go out and buy all oh, the copies. Yeah, drive, buy, drive the price up. Buy Four all copies of Big Eye. Yep. Big. Can't wait to see that on TCG Player. $100 a copy. Give thick. <laughs> That's it. We'll see you guys in the next one.